Patrolling space like a sentry, the satellite telescope SWIFT is on constant lookout for cosmic disasters. And when it finds one, down on Earth, word spreads quickly. Every few days, the satellite spots a violent eruption in deep space, sending dozens of stargazers scrambling. Whether they're seasoned pros or high school amateurs, their goal is the same. Go to camera focus mode, and then we're gonna need to move the dome. Casey? To catch a glimpse of a star in its final death throes. Going supernova. And leaving in its wake, the strangest phenomenon in the cosmos. A black hole. Nothing survives encounters with black holes. The black hole wins. It wins every time. When something falls into a black hole, it's essentially gone from our universe. They rip stuff apart and eat them. And then they burp and they're ready for the next course. And now, evidence of something even more ominous. A new kind of black hole of unfathomable size and power. That's a big galaxy and right down at the center, we think there's probably a black hole that's got a mass you know, that approaches a billion suns. Today, scientists are finding black holes are bigger, stronger, and more destructive than they ever imagined. It creates energy fields that would fry any life in its vicinity. Not only do they consume everything that comes near, you stick your finger down in there, you ain't getting it back. But their power may reach across galaxies and beyond. Did the universe really have to be made with these things in it? We'd like to think they're far, far away. But what if, in our own cosmic backyard, there lurks the monster of the Milky Way? Right now on Nova. <laughs> This is just enormous. As he pores over a set of x-rays, Brian McNamara struggles to diagnose a complicated ailment. So that's pretty strange. But his patient isn't a person or any earthly creature. It's a cluster of galaxies, two and a half billion light years away, with a giant blast of energy spewing from the center. This is the most powerful explosion in the universe since the Big Bang. To put this on sort of an Earth scale, it's equivalent to about a trillion, trillion, trillion atomic explosions. So it's an enormous amount of energy. What could produce such awesome power? Whatever it is, it seems to live at the very core of galaxies. And many believe our own galaxy, the Milky Way, is not immune, harboring a powerful secret at its heart. What could lie at the center of the Milky Way? One of the pioneering explorers of our galaxy is Eric Becklin. He's been trying to unlock the mysteries of the galactic center for more than 40 years. But first, he had to find it. Back then, people weren't even sure where the center was. There was some vague understanding. There was a radio source called Sagittarius A, a very strong radio source. But there was even debate whether that was really the center or not. Examining other distant galaxies, astronomers knew that the center is usually the brightest spot, tightly packed with stars. But when they tried to pinpoint the center of our own galaxy, the Milky Way, they ran into a problem. The central stars were shrouded by cosmic dust. There is so much dust between us and the galactic center, it is completely opaque you do not see the stars in the galactic center. The most powerful telescopes cannot see it. 
But there are other kinds of light that can pass through, like infrared, a form of light and heat invisible to the naked eye that travels in slightly longer waves. Infrared radiation gets through the dust because its wavelengths are longer and the dust just kind of rides on the infrared wave. In the 1960s, Becklin belonged to a Caltech team that bought an infrared detector from a military contractor and attached it to the end of a telescope. It was in August of 1966. I was up at Mount Wilson. It was a beautiful night on a small 24-inch telescope. And as we were looking uh, with the infrared detector, we were seeing more and more stars. A simple chart recorded the infrared light of stars, stars that until then had remained hidden behind a veil of dust and debris. This is the signal in the infrared and each star gives you more signal. And we were building up, as we were getting closer to the center, more and more stars. We were actually seeing through the dust for the first time, and then came to a peak. And then back down again. And I knew immediately that that was the center of our Milky Way, and that I was the first person to actually see the star in the core of our galaxy located the heart of the Milky Way. From our perspective, an inconspicuous speck near the constellation Sagittarius. It was a giant spiraling disk of hundreds of billions of stars, a hundred thousand light years from end to end. Our sun, about halfway out from the center, sits in the peaceful suburbs. But at the galaxy's core, the neighborhood gets more exciting and dangerous. There's a lot of gas. There's a lot of dust. This is absolutely the most crowded place in our galaxy. From Earth, we can see a few thousand stars with the naked eye. If you went to the galactic center, there would be millions of stars filling the sky. It's the big time. It's where the show really goes on in the galaxy. And so, if you go there, you're very much aware of being uh, a tiny little mouse in Times Square and somebody's liable to step on you. For years, scientists suspected that a powerful force dominated this galactic Times Square. It had to come from an unimaginably massive object. Some thought it had to be a black hole. An object so strange it's hard to describe. What's a black hole? It's a region of space. It's a point of infinite density. We don't know how to wrap our brains around that. Um, if you fall in, you never come out. It's not the point of no return, it's the sphere of no return. Now you throw in a hungry beast in the middle of it all. It's this monstrous, mysterious thing. And if you can imagine taking a bowling ball that I don't know, eats everything. That's not true. <laughs> you have something, you drop it off the top of a building, and you're falling in to the deepest well you can possibly imagine. Physicists have just as hard a time as anybody else understanding this sort of thing. It's a black hole. There's no other phrase we can possibly use to describe it. The current idea of this bizarre creature comes from a radical view of space, time, and gravity. Welcome to the universe according to Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein had this crazy idea that space and time were curved, and it was the curvature of space that gave the appearance of gravity. We tend to think of space as rigid and stable, but Einstein proposed that space and time are woven together in a flexible fabric. Massive objects like the sun actually bend and warp the fabric of space-time, creating troughs that smaller objects can fall into. What actually happens is matter warps space-time. So the very space, the three-dimensional space that we walk through, warps slightly. Every warps in on me ever so slightly, but because we're not very massive, 
it's so minuscule that we don't sense it. If an object is massive enough, like the Earth, it will warp space-time so we can sense it and fall towards it. That's gravity. But what happens if an object is much, much more massive than the Earth or the Sun? In theory, it could warp the fabric so much it would create an actual hole in space-time. Once something fell in, it couldn't escape, not even light itself. So imagine a place where the gravity is so strong, turning on a flashlight. The light would go up and it would never leave. It would curve and come back down just the way a tossed ball on Earth is not traveling fast enough. It goes up, curves, and comes back down. Space itself is falling inside the black hole. It's rather like a, a river falling over a waterfall. It's like that, except it's space itself that's falling over the cliff. There's a place where the space starts moving faster than light. So the light, which is trying to get out, it's rather like a kayak trying to make their way upstream on a river that's going too fast. They get dragged down to the center of the black hole. Gravity becomes a riptide. The closer you get, the stronger the current. Eventually, you reach the event horizon, the point of no return. Deep inside, whatever goes in is lost in a point of infinite density. The matter goes inside the surface of the black hole, shrinks down to the very center where it gets destroyed in a region of infinite warp space and time, and it's gone. And so, it seems, are the laws of physics. At the center of a black hole, all equations break down. Even for physicists, what happens deep inside a black hole is a mystery. We're in want of a new idea about how to explain what matter does at the center of a black hole. We're in need of a new law of physics. Einstein himself concluded black holes were too strange to be real. Albert never really liked the idea of black holes. He thought they were anathema. This was something that nature should avoid. The places where space and time became infinitely twisted up, he thought, no, nature shouldn't allow that. Black holes are certainly odd beasts in the universe. They were thought to be peculiar, so peculiar as to perhaps not even really exist in the real world. Simply because your equations show that they can exist doesn't require that the real universe has them. But over the years, suspicions rose. Stars were found behaving strangely, orbiting invisible objects, moving faster than expected. Even though a black hole emits no light, is completely invisible, we know exactly what effect a black hole is going to have on its environment, on the stars in its vicinity, on the gas that wanders a little too close. So will we ever see a black hole? No. But that's not what's important here. What's important here is we can see its paw print. Suspicious that an enormous black hole was dominating the center of the Milky Way, Eric Becklin was eager to find its paw print. But even with infrared technology, when Becklin pointed the most powerful telescopes on Earth at his target, all he saw was this, just a blur. The biggest obstacle that we had uh, was the turbulence in the, our own Earth's atmosphere was blurring the images. Even when the sky is clear, the gases in Earth's atmosphere are always on the move, distorting distant objects. To bring his view of the galactic center into focus, Becklin would need help. So he appealed to Andrea Ghez, an expert in dealing with the atmospheric blur. The problems of the Earth's atmosphere is very much like the problem of looking for a penny at the bottom of a river that's moving where the water is moving by very quickly. That motion of the water distorts your image of the penny. Just like the motion of the air in our atmosphere distorts our images of astronomical objects. Gez agreed to take on the quest. 
to search for signs of a black hole at the center of the Milky Way. A decade ago, you couldn't look at the center of our galaxy with high resolution, so you couldn't distinguish stars from one another. Gez was able to correct the blurring effects of the atmosphere with a revolutionary new technology called adaptive optics. So this little animation shows you the benefit of adaptive optics. You see the stars without adaptive optics, you turn the adaptive optics on, and all of a sudden you see stars. And in particular, you see stars near the center of the galaxy. Without adaptive optics, you would only see one big blob. And those stars are, in fact, the most important for us to track. We track all of them, but these are the ones that are the key to the problem. I mean, it doesn't hurt to take them more Thanks to the new technology, the team could peer into the heart of the Milky Way with amazing precision. Our view to the center of the galaxy is absolutely superb, and our ability to position stars at the center of the galaxy is like somebody in Los Angeles seeing somebody in New York be able to move their finger like this, okay, just two centimeters. That's the precision with which we can measure something that is 26,000 light years away from us. Once the view was clear, Gez could start the hunt. If there were a black hole at the center of the galaxy, its paw print would be found in the rapid orbits of nearby stars. Keep our fingers crossed. The conclusive experiment to be done that really demonstrated that it was a black hole was to follow the orbits of individual stars in the galactic center very, very accurately and with the highest precision possible. When an object like a star approaches another more massive object, the pull of gravity will make the star speed up. If it's orbiting close to a massive black hole, the star should accelerate to enormous speed and then whip around the black hole like a slingshot. Okay, so we have the black hole here. Uh, the more massive it is, the more pull there is. The more pull there is, as it gets close to the black hole, the faster it goes. And we are measuring the speed of these stars. That's the key to getting the masses, measuring the speed of those stars. This is our road map, and that's the center of our galaxy. There's a large cluster of stars that are orbiting the center of our galaxy, and by measuring the motion of stars, and in particular um, their orbits, uh, we can figure out whether or not there's a central black hole. That environment in there, it's a crowded party. Gez set out to monitor the partygoers, to track every movement of the central stars. Basically, the way this experiment works is you take an image, you see where all the stars are, and then uh, you come back some time later and you take another image, and you look to see if they've moved. And so the, the second time we took an image, we knew we were golden. Those stars had clearly moved. This one moved to here, this one moved to here, this one moved to here, and so on. As Gez continued to track the stars, she found some making dramatic hairpin turns. It made a huge jump to over here, so it went whoop, all the way around. And it's moving on order 10 million miles per hour, so it's just speeding away. Other astronomers clocked the stars with similar results. Not only were the stars accelerating to phenomenal speeds, their orbits were perfectly smooth. Gez knew that they had to be circling a single massive object. Most black holes are thought to be about 10 times more massive than our sun. But the object at the center of the Milky Way was roughly 3 million times as massive. For Gez and Becklin, that could mean only one thing. All other physical explanations of uh, what was at the very center uh, were gone. The only thing left was a black hole. Not only was this black hole supermassive, it was millions of miles wide. Astronomers around the world admitted the evidence was impressive. I have to say, when I first saw Andrea's video, I was stunned when I saw that star come out of the left side of the frame and go zipping around and go shooting off into the other end of the frame, and it moved around a point in space, and nothing was there that we could, with our instruments, 
effectively travel to the center of the galaxy 26,000 light years away and collect the evidence for such an incredible object it was, it was really an amazing achievement. It seemed undeniable, a giant black hole and at the center of our Milky Way. But how could such a monstrosity come to be? One idea is that black holes are born out of the death throes of enormous stars. Like a red supergiant, a star ten times more massive than our own sun. Deep inside, temperatures soar above a billion degrees. Helium and carbon fuse into heavier elements. Oxygen, silicon, sulfur. Eventually, the nuclear reaction creates iron, and the core stops burning. Then, the star implodes under its own immense gravity and goes supernova. What's left is a heavy core of subatomic particles, a neutron star, only about 10 miles across, but of incredible density. In fact, it's so dense that a teaspoonful of neutron star matter would weigh about a billion tons. If the neutron star is heavy enough, three times more massive than our sun or more, the implosion will continue. Eventually, the gravitational pressure will be so large that the neutrons themselves will be crushed and there'll be nothing left to stop the collapse. Many researchers believe that the Milky Way is littered with small black holes, the dark, dense remains of dead stars. There must be millions and millions of black holes zipping around our galaxy as we speak, but we don't see them in general because they're dead. They're corpses, and uh, there's nothing there to light them up. They might be invisible, but to a visitor, these small black holes, maybe 10 miles in diameter, would be especially deadly. One of the scenarios that always gets me thinking is death by black hole. Approaching a black hole, the gravity is so strong and space is so warped, it distorts the light all around it. If it's a small black hole, then soon you'll be distorted too by tremendous tidal forces of gravity. The tidal force is the difference between the gravity at your head and your feet. The gravity at your feet, if they're closer to the black hole, is a little bit stronger than the gravity at your head, and you feel that as something that is tearing you apart. Stretching you from head to toe, the tidal forces unrelentingly getting stronger as they exceed the molecular forces that bind your flesh as you snap into two pieces, and those two pieces snap into another two pieces. And ultimately, you will pull your atoms apart. You will be, as we say, spaghettified. And so you end up moving through space-time like toothpaste through a tube. And if I pick a way to go, that's how I'd want to go. It's got to be better than just getting buried. I mean, come on now. A supermassive black hole a million times wider might at first seem more inviting. Since it has a larger event horizon, the pull of gravity is more spread out. If you go to a supermassive black hole, the tidal forces are weak enough that you can fall not only through the event horizon, but deep down into the interior of the black hole. So, with a good spaceship, you might be able to cross the event horizon into the black hole itself. Now, thanks to a computer simulation based on Einstein's own equations, we can see exactly what such a trip would look like. The supermassive black hole is surrounded by swirling light beams as superheated gas rushes into orbit at high speed. Light and matter are suspended by centrifugal force and then inevitably fall victim to the relentless pull of gravity. At last you cross the event horizon, the 
point where nothing can escape. So let, let's imagine that we fall through the event horizon. That's the place where space is moving faster than light. We fall deeper down inside the black hole. But don't expect the black hole to be black. Deep within, there's an inner horizon, a logjam of trapped light and energy. At a certain moment, as we hit the inner horizon, there's this infinitely bright, blinding flash. And that's all the stuff that's been waiting there, trying to get out, is just held there at the inner horizon. Unfortunately, you wouldn't have long to enjoy the view. It would vaporize you, roast you, vaporize you, marmalize you. Almost certainly, if you fell into a real black hole, you would simply, unfortunately, die. Science fiction displays a bit more optimism, like the 1979 movie, The Black Hole. Space travelers do indeed fear this massive object. I will travel where no man has dared to go. Into the black hole? Why, that's crazy. Cuckoo is a Swiss clock. But even more cuckoo, the heroes actually survived their descent into the beast, where they're treated to a heavenly experience. Popular culture has cast black holes as the freaks of the universe. And the supermassive black hole at the center of our Milky Way, weighing in at three million times the mass of the sun, seems especially monstrous. But is it unique? To find out, astronomers are probing distant galaxies to see if our giant black hole is one of a kind, or nothing special. The Sloan Digital Sky Survey is taking a census of the big galaxies within a billion light years. For every patch of sky, a steel plate is created. Each hole represents an entire galaxy within our view. Fiber optic sensors are plugged in. Each measures the distinctive spectrum of light emanating from a galaxy's core and can detect signs of hot gas swirling into a black hole. You can see the results. Circled in red, virtually every major galaxy bears the signature of a supermassive black hole. That was pretty amazing. Before that, we thought, yeah, maybe a large number of galaxies have black holes in them, but every galaxy has a black hole? That was something very interesting. The closer we look to the centers of galaxies, the more we find these black holes, and the inventory is rising high. So any idea for the formation of a galaxy will now have to include some explanation for how you get a black hole in its center. So how did every big galaxy in the universe end up with a giant black hole in the middle? To understand, we have to go back to the very beginning. the Big Bang. You got the Big Bang handing you your birth ingredients, your hydrogen, your helium, your, your traces of some other elements. So it's kind of like this, this soup. You put it together and stir it. The main stir for the soup is gravity, drawing together wisps of hot primordial gases over time, the clouds of hydrogen gas cool down and grow more and more dense until some coalesce into the first stars. These are